Hello, I'm Charlotte Estripathma. We start this hour with some breaking news. Authorities in Russia have confirmed that the head of the Wagner Group, paramilitary group, Yevgeny Prigozhin, has died in a plane crash which crashed northwest of Moscow on Wednesday. They confirmed the identities of the bodies recovered corresponded with the flight's passenger list, which had named Mr. Prigozhin. Now, the mercenary leader had led an aborted mutiny against the Russian military in June amid growing tension with Russian commanders over the war in Ukraine. He'd since relocated to Belarus. And you can see him on our screens now speaking a few months ago. Well, live now to uh, BBC's monitoring Russian editor, Vitaly Shevchenko. Vitaly, um, is it we sort of suspected this was the case and now we've got confirmation that Prigozhin has indeed died in that crash? Yes, this uh, short announcement by Russia's official investigations committee came as um, no surprise to anyone. Evgeny Prigozhin and his right-hand man, Dmitry Utkin, as well as uh, a couple of other key commanders uh, from the Wagner mercenary group, uh, they were presumed dead following the uh, uh, air crash four days ago. Now, the big question is, what caused uh, Evgeny Prigozhin's uh, plane to crash? And um, even though the investigations committee said on Friday that it was looking at every possible version of what happened, few independent observers would uh, trust that government agency to uh, come up with the full and complete uh, um, truth of what happened because it is completely controlled by the Kremlin. And, and as we know, um, there was a growing chorus of voices arguing that um, getting rid of Evgeny Prigozhin would possibly be a way for Vladimir Putin to reassert his authority following Wagner's uh, failed mutiny back in June. But that, again, is speculation completely unconfirmed. And um, um, as I say, the Russian Investigations Committee is hardly an independent investigative agency to look into it. And um, Vitaly, we have have heard we've heard from President Putin in the last couple of days um, about him asking uh, mercenaries to pledge their allegiance to Russia. Indeed, that's um, um, a, a presidential decree that was issued with immediate effect on on Friday, and um, it can be seen as a way to strengthen government control over the uh, proliferating number of uh, private military companies involved in the so-called special military operation against uh, Ukraine. But it remains to be seen whether the move will be anything more than a symbolic gesture where new recruits will be made, will be made to kneel before the Russian flag and um, swear allegiance to the Russian Federation um, and the Russian constitution. Um, as things stand at the moment, it's difficult to to see it as a... As a, as a bulletproof way of making sure that whoever signs up to, to join the fight against Ukraine stays loyal to um, uh, Russia's uh, official top, top brass, as it were. But it's clearly a concern in the Kremlin that all these private groups, even though we know now that Wagner was funded by the state, but it's still a concern that these groups um, can uh, have more loyalty to their uh, commanders rather than uh, the uh, Russian Defence Ministry. Indeed. And Vitaly, how is this playing out in Russia? How are people reacting to this plane crash? Well, questions are being asked. And um, even though state television, it didn't exactly play up the, the importance of, of the crash. The reports that it broadcast were, were short and, and dry and merely said that Evgeny Prigozhin's name was on the list of passengers declared as flying there, and, and there was absolutely no um, effort to uh, explain the significance of what happened or um, um, speculate about the possible causes. But still, 
um, Russians can access social media, and that's where a lot of speculation is happening. For example, um, social media accounts linked to Wagner um, hours after the plane crash, they started speculating that uh, Evgeny Prigozhin's plane had been shot down deliberately by Russian air defences. They shot, they stopped short of pointing the finger of blame at the Kremlin directly. But that's one popular theory circulating um, among uh, commentators on Russian social media. OK, Vitaly, we'll have to leave it there. BBC Monitoring's Russian editor, Vitaly Shevchenko. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.